they are going to create Y2K photo effects. What's going on everyone, my name is Tom from Dread Labs. I'm a graphic designer and today I'm gonna to teach you a couple of methods on how to create a Y2K retro effect on your photos. Before we dive into the video, I just wanted to let you know that you can get over 100 PSD files if you become a patron of mine, including the PSD file I made in this video. There's a link down in the description, but if you wanna learn more, stick around until the end of the video. Without any further ado, let's get into it. So we're looking at a photo from my photo shoot for my clothing brand. This photo was done by Nori. I'll put a link to her portfolio in the description because she's an amazing photographer. So she out to Nori. But the main thing that you want to do before you start out creating this photo effect is make sure that you're taking a picture in a wide angle lens. You can do this with the latest iPhones as well. You can just put the camera angle to 0.5. But if you don't have that on your phone, there's also a quick and easy solution on how to create this yourself in Photoshop. And I'll show it to you right now. All right, so this is the unedited photo. And there's actually a filter in Photoshop that can help you create this sort of distorted effect where the front of the camera is like way larger than the back. And you can find that under filter lens correction. So if you just go here, the screen will pop up and you go to the custom tab at the top right. And here you have this geometric distortion effect. And basically what you can do here is either bulge this photo like this, or you can create a, a really wide angle effect. And you cannot really see it here, I think. Let's see if we can show you the difference. You can see it a little bit, but I'm going to show it to you on another photo as well. All right, so I just grabbed a photo from Unsplash. And what I'm going to do is turn this into a smart object so we can edit this filter later. I'm going to go to filter, lens correction, and if you go to custom here, what you can do is just up this distortion all the way. And if this effect isn't drastic enough for you, what you can also do is just duplicate this lens distortion filter over and over again. A quick and easy way to do this is hold alt or option on your keyboard and just click and drag your lens correction up in the layer menu. And as you can see, this like fish eye filter thing starts forming slowly. You will end up with some weird proportions. For example, as you can see, her arm is almost the same length as the whole model in general, but this will give you that fish eye look. So if we turn off the smart filters, this was where we started with and this is what we end up with so just know that you can do this filter effect in photoshop as well all right the next thing that we're going to do is basically blur this a little bit sharpen it and then blur it again and this will create some sort of lo-fi effect so let's just go to filter gaussian blur and I think a 0.5 should be enough. It really depends on the size of your document, of course. But for now, I think we just blur out the details a little bit. Maybe we'll just do one pixel. Then we're going to go back to filter, sharpen, smart sharpen. And this is where we kind of need to see what we're looking for. I think we're going to up the radius a little bit. So what you're looking for is if you want to do this really drastically, you can just, of course, put the radius higher and higher. I think if you're like for me, radius of like four pixels should do the trick. Maybe three and a half is already enough. I just want to show you that this can be really drastically increase the low fineness of your photos if that makes sense uh, but of course now it's a little bit too sharp so what we can do is go to filter blur gaussian blur once again and then blur this out with a half pixel as you can see the photo looks a little bit sharper but not too sharp if you know what i mean all right so the next thing that you can really see in these photos is that the skin tones are really really saturated so we're going to select these skin tones in this photo by going to select color range and in the color range we're going to select these skin tones here as you can see we can play around with the fuzziness so the lower this goes the more like it's sharp and this selection is so let's go with this and then what we're going to do is go to adjustments use saturation and we'll click as you can see we now have a use saturation with a selection of the skin tones make this higher you can see that the skin is almost like turning orange and that's kind of what we're looking for with this effect however you might have seen this already in the mask but we're also saturating uh, other parts of the photo and if you're not okay with that what you can do is hold alt or option and click on the mask in the layer menu and as you can see this is basically the selection so what you can now just do is brush out stuff that you don't really want to be affected by your use saturation filter uh, in my case i'm just going to like brush this like black And there we go. All right, so the next thing that we can do is saturate the background. And the way that I'm gonna do this is a little bit different. Basically, what I'm gonna do is go to the photo, select subject, and we should have a selection of ESA or model right now. It may not be entirely accurate, so what I'm gonna do is go to select, select a mask, and refine the selection a little bit because I can see that her shoe, for example, hasn't been taken into the selection. And for the rest, I think we're good to go, so we'll just click OK. But of course, we want the selection of the background and not the... So the way to fix that is by pressing Control or Command, Shift, and I, on your keyboard and this will invert the selection and now if we make a new solid color 
As you can see, we now have a solid color with the background here. So what we're looking for is maybe like a green, like a darker green like this. And I'm gonna put the blend mode of this solid color to overlay. And as you can see, this really saturates the background here. Maybe it's a little bit too much. So we'll just play around with the color for a minute until we're satisfied. And I think something like this is working fine. Now the last part, and this really depends on your photo, but usually this works pretty well. And that's, you wanna like, don't use perfect blacks in your photo because this will have a printed effect. And with these printed effects, the darkest colors will always be a little bit lighter. The way I'm gonna do this is by just clicking in a curves adjustment layer and bring this lower point up a little bit. As you can see, this is supposed to be a black hoodie, but yeah, you can see it a little bit better and it's a little bit brighter, maybe even too saturated, but for the sake of this photo style, this actually works pretty well. And so to finish this off with some textures, what we can do is either add a grain texture or a photocopy texture. The photocopy texture has my personal preference, but of course you can add any texture that you like. So if you don't know where to get your photocopy textures, I will put a couple of links down in the description for me what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna grab one of the photocopy textures that's in my ink textures pack so if you want to get it there's a link down in the description but i will also link a couple of other really useful ones because the one that i used in the example was by blackmark and i have some really solid textures as well all right as you can see my texture is a little bit like uh, bluish so i'm just going to remove the color here and i'm going to change this to screen and we're going to scale it up accordingly and we're going to make this a little bit darker by pressing command m on our keyboard we can actually use the curse menu on our specific photocopy layer and this way we'll only have these scan lines here what i want to do as well is duplicate this layer change the blend mode to multiply double click on the curves and then essentially make this a little bit lighter so we have the darker parts of our texture as well if you want to learn more about how i use these textures and blend modes there's a link down in the description as well because learning how to use these textures to your advantage can actually work really well if you want to become a graphic designer and there we have it all right so this is what we started out with and this is what we ended up with so yeah i'm fairly happy with the result and i hope that i gave you enough techniques and tips in this video to start using your own y2k logo effects on your own photos so if you want to get the psd file for this which will include the textures as well as the color adjustments and stuff like that you can become a patron of mine if you don't know i upload videos on a weekly basis and i wouldn't be able to do that if i wasn't doing dreadlabs full-time and because i'm not really making that much money with the ad revenue of youtube thanks to my patreon i'm actually able to keep paying my bills while doing dreadlabs full-time and in the process i will give you more tutorials every week as a thank you for becoming a patron and you get access to all of the project files from all of my tutorials, which is over 100 PSD files, over 60 Illustrator files, Cinema 4D files, and After Effects and more. You'll also get a 15% discount in my asset web store where you can get the full asset packages such as the texture pack that I used in this video. On top of that, you'll also get an exclusive Discord role in our community server. And if you go one tier up, you'll also get access to exclusive videos such as how to start your own clothing brand, how to make death metal logos from scratch, how to create Y2K Ray flyers, learning the basics of Illustrator and much more. So if this is something you're interested in, there's a link down in the description and a huge shout out to all of my existing patrons for now. And if you don't have the budget to support Dreadlabs in that way, of course, that's completely fine because leaving a like, comment and a subscribe if you haven't already, already does a lot. So with all of that being said, this is Tom from Dreadlabs tuning out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.